What's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to my personal list of the five most common mistakes that a beginner developer does, especially on WordPress. So WordPress is a pretty famous CMS that pretty much everyone knows and everyone uses, especially like if you need to build a, a blog or some like super quick website, WordPress is kind of like the first choice that comes up, most likely because it's been around for many, many years and actually using it, it's really simple. I don't know if you know this, but building a WordPress theme or a WordPress website or an entire company website with WordPress, it's actually really easy. It's one of the few CMSs, few softwares out there that you can actually build an entire theme with just copy pasting code from Stack Overflow. That's pretty impressive and pretty scary as well. So I've been using WordPress for many, many years now and I've been dealing with a lot of beginner developers or in general, like a lot of developers that they know how to use WordPress, they know how to build something with WordPress, but they don't really know how to make it properly. That's one of the strengths and weakness of WordPress. You can literally build everything without actually knowing properly how to build something with WordPress. It's, a, it's just amazing, mind-blowing, and kind of frightening sometimes. So the first mistake that pretty much every developer, beginner or not beginner developers does with WordPress, it's relying on too many plugins. I know plugins are the best thing ever. You can have your default CMS and then install 10, 15 different plugins and then like turn WordPress into whatever type of website you want. You can install a page builder, you can install extensions, widgets, new sections, custom post types. You can install pretty much everything to heavily update, heavily change the look and feel of WordPress both for front end and back end, but that doesn't mean you should do it. Having many, many plugins installed on your website can cause a lot of problems from like a simple slowdown of your website, making it like super heavy or something so could be also something really serious like opening your website to vulnerabilities, running bad code or running like vulnerable code that will cause a lot of issues to you or your client if you're building the website for someone else. Trying to limit the amount of plugins that you use to the, like the most essential one is gonna be easier for you on the long run to manage and quickly update the website if something goes wrong. If you need to do something, try to code it by yourself, not rely 100% on plugins after plugins after plugins, especially because pretty much every plugin then publish it front-end code like CSS or JavaScript directly in your homepage or your the front end of your entire website without you having any control on deactivating those codes and slowing down your website a lot, doing a lot of different HTTP calls and injecting some CSS or JavaScript that could probably conflict with another plugin. The second most common mistake is about writing code and pretty much Every time I access a WordPress website that was done by a developer a couple of years ago or an, an experienced developer, uh, I usually access the first thing, I access the functions.php file. And I don't know, nine times out of 10, that file is just like a gigantic, waterfall of code, it's just spaghetti code, everything is slapped there, uh, functions by functions, everything is procedural and is just like so nuts and so insane to update and it turns pretty quickly into a horrible, horrible legacy code that it's pretty impossible to update because something, if you touch something, you're gonna break something else on another side, that's, that's terrible. Just because WordPress accepts pretty much every type of code or script inside the functions.php, it doesn't mean you have to use only that file to code everything. The easiest way to avoid this mistake is splitting your code in separate files and then require those files with a require once or include once method inside the functions.php in order to run everything. Try to keep your files short and sweet because are gonna be easier to manage and maintain and update or fix in case something goes wrong. But if you decide to write everything line by line, one after another inside one single file, you're gonna have a bad time, especially if your functions.php passed like the 500, 600 lines of code, it's gonna be really terrible for you to manage. And probably you're gonna hate yourself or the next developer that jumps on the project is gonna hate you a lot. The third common mistake that I see is 
pretty much everyone writes procedural code for WordPress just because WordPress it's kind of built on procedural code. I know recently WordPress is pushing a lot object-oriented programming with the customizer API. The Wolkernaf class is an example of kind of good object-oriented programming, but the majority of the WordPress ecosystem is built on procedural code. And building a theme with just procedural code is just really easy. And procedural code is mostly used by beginners because they don't, they didn't grasp the all the gist and why they should use object oriented programming, why it's better, how to use it properly, and that's totally normal. But writing an entire theme just with procedural code, even if you split your code in different files, is not really a good approach. Building an object-oriented programming theme is pretty easy, and as an example, I released AWPS, my custom theme fully built on object-oriented programming. Having classes wrapping your functions or your methods is going to be way better to manage, especially you're not going to have that appendix L that every time you create a new method, you need to put the name of your theme up on top, like before the name of the method, just to avoid to have a functions repeated with the same name on a plugin or on a widget or an extension that you're using. And having classes instead of just procedure or method by method will help you to be a better developer actually, because probably with this set of mind and with this configuration, you will end up avoiding writing many, many type of useless codes or useless methods just because you don't want to think of how to make it more functional, how to make it more modular, and you reuse the same method in a more modular way. Having an object-oriented programming approach will improve your programming skills and will avoid to bloat your WordPress theme with just like some useless and really hard to maintain a PHP procedural code. The fourth common mistake, and it's something that I, I'm seeing more often that I would like to see, is that um, most of the time a developer just copy-paste a portion of code from another theme or another plugin to inject or implement in their own theme. This is not a bad approach. I mean, it's bad, like definitely it's bad, but it's not kind of the worst, but you should totally avoid that. First, you're kind of like coping code that someone else did without acknowledging that. Even if it's open source, you should always acknowledge the code that you're using, giving a shout out to the author or something like that. But on the other hand, you're just extracting a portion of code from a plugin or a theme that uh, wasn't really built to work in a way that you wanted to. So you're just extracting the portion, injecting in your theme. And I don't know. 90% of the time you're gonna have a lot of problems. It happened in the past where I needed to maintain or refactor an old theme built by a non-experienced developer and I saw a lot of portions of code injected inside the main code of the theme instead of using a plugin because the author, the, the previous developer, didn't want to use that plugin but wanted to use the functionality of the plugin so he decided just to copy paste and inject that plugin or implement, manually implement that plugin inside the main code of the theme. And that was terrible because actually then uh, that plugin that he was supposed to use was updated. There, there were like way more functionalities and way more options and it was better to use that one and I wasn't able to use it because the code was conflicting to the code that he pulled before when he built the website on the first place. So that's a pretty terrible approach. Everyone kind of do it. I admit like I did it at the beginning just because I wanted to learn, like something was working so I can just copy paste the code and make it work on my theme. But after you do that, after you implement it and see that it works, you should actually refactory or rewriting that code to learn more, like to actually learn how it works and to actually build it by yourself. So you're gonna learn a lot more instead of just copy pasting something from a forum for another plugin from another theme and just patch many many different type of codes all together especially because nowadays it's hard to find consistency in the way that a developer writes code i know we have psr2 conventions and we should follow everyone should follow the same rule set but no one does especially on wordpress so 
you should always try to write the code by yourself to maintain consistency with your own type of style coding. And on the bonus side, you should actually follow the rule set of like a well-known type of rules convention like PSR2. Uh, just to avoid that another developer that doesn't know how you code is gonna get completely exhausted by trying to understand why you write those things in that way. So just follow some rule set convention. Everyone's gonna be way happier than we are right now. And the last mistake that everyone does or actually should be the first one because it kind of like the scariest one but the most important is that pretty much everyone doesn't update their own theme or plugins. I mean, after coding weeks or months your theme and everything works perfectly and everything is at the point you want it to, you're kind of afraid of updating or upgrading WordPress to a new version or updating that plugin that works really, really well with your current status of the theme. So everyone decided to let's completely deactivate updates or out updates to my server, let's completely deactivate or also let's completely strip out the update module of WordPress. I saw this thing sometimes accessing a WordPress website and not seeing the update section because the previous developer manually stripped out the update component of WordPress just because he was so afraid that a new version of something was going to break his entire theme. This is terrible. You should never, never do that. First, if you're terrified that an update will break your code, that means that your code is written poorly. You should rewrite your code in order to be, okay, if this thing gets updated, it's gonna totally gonna be fine because my code is solid. It doesn't require any weird quirky thing. I didn't manually update the code of a plugin just to make it work. You should have a modular code that works pretty much with every version of WordPress. You should constantly check the codex and see if a specific method of WordPress, it's gonna be deprecated soon, it's already deprecated and you're still using it, or it's something that probably could cause some issues with other plugins or other settings. If you don't update your version of WordPress, the version of the client, or any version of plugins, you're opening your websites to vulnerabilities, to bugs, to being hacked really easily because every time also, every time there's another thing that no one considers that often, every time there's a new version of something, a software like WordPress, a plugin, an extension, all the list of change log, all, all the updates that have been done to that specific piece of software, they get released so hackers can know what vulnerabilities were fixed and just look in, okay, who's running this older version of this plugin or who's running this older version of WordPress? I know what vulnerabilities were fixed. This guy is still with the old version. I can use that vulnerability to whatever, destroy his website, access his source code and do something really, really bad. You don't want that, right? So always code in a way that an update will not destroy your theme. I'm currently running my personal blog on WordPress and this theme, the theme that I currently have on is three years old. And I recently updated to WordPress 4.8 and all my plugins that are up to date, I actually have an auto updated uh, method, an auto updated system running on my machine. So automatically every time there's a new version, the updates get rolled out and installed because I'm pretty confident that the code that I built, even if it's not the best code, I followed all the conventions and rules of WordPress and I know that even if there's a new version, nothing is gonna break. So you should definitely do that. Never leave a WordPress website with 27 updates to do or a main CMS version like older than I don't know, two years, it's, it's insane. It's just like, you're gonna have a bad time or the next developer is gonna take care of your website, is gonna have a terrible time and is gonna hate you. And we don't wanna hate between developers. Like we all wanna love each other, right? What do you think? Do you think I missed something? Or do you think other developers have like do some pretty heavy mistakes that they should not do? Do you have some personal experience with something pretty sketchy that happened to a, Word a WordPress website you were working on? Please let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up if you like it or a thumb down if you think that this video sucked a lot or I hope not. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I talk to you in the next one.